My name is Chris. You're watching B-Boy 45 here at the Hospital Zone TV and radio station in our own TV and radio studio, Seacrest Studio, and this is Maya's show. Maya, why is today a special edition of your um, show? Because we have Jonathan from the band Nightly on the phone. Jonathan from the band Nightly! woo That hey. is awesome. And he's here with us. Super good, super cool. Maya, we got Jonathan on the line. Take it away with your awesome questions. Okay, so um, who or what inspired you to form the band? Well, hey, Maya, thank you so much for having us on the show. Appreciate that, first of all. Um, and that's a great question. You know, we, uh, Joey and I, who's the guitarist, um, we're cousins. We grew up together, and we just kind of always loved playing music. Um, we were playing since we were really young kids. Um, but the things that inspire us now are just sort of like the things that, uh, that we experience every day, you know, our everyday emotions. And that's kind of what we, we write about, but I honestly don't know what it is. We just have, have always wanted to be in a band since we were kids. Cool. Nice. <laughs> um, so how did you come up with, the name Nightly, and what does it mean to you? Yeah, um, so we were coming up with band names. We were trying to think of something that felt really personal, um, and we were throwing around a different, a couple different ideas, and, and originally we had this thought of uh, Night Love You, which would be like a text that you would send to somebody you were really close to. And so we really loved Night Love You. And so it kind of got shortened to Night and then just L-Y, like Love You. Um, and then that just sort of eventually smashed together and became Nightly. So if you didn't know that, you wouldn't necessarily know. But for our fans, it's kind of just a little secret meaning behind the behind the name. Ooh, we got the name scoop. <laughs> yeah. Right on. <laughs> Yeah, um, so what's your songwriting process like? It's it's always different, um, but we all, so there's three of us in the band, and we collaborate. Um, Nick is our drummer, so he makes beats a lot of times, um, but it, Joey and Nick are both really talented. They play lots of instruments, so we, sometimes people will be on a keyboard or whatever, and... Um, a lot of the time we're on the road, like today, for example, we're actually on tour right now and we have the day off. So we're in a hotel room and we have an acoustic guitar out and then a laptop and we're kind of just writing over um, a song that we started a little while ago. So generally that's how it happens. We all kind of are in a room and come up with some chords and some music and then um, I'll sort of take my time and write some lyrics and we'll sort of figure out what fits and what doesn't fit. And that's kind of, kind of our process, but it's, you know, every song is a little, comes out a little bit different each time. Right on. And you can take the yeah. studio with you on the road. That's so cool. Yeah, we try to, I mean, we, uh, you know, we've been very privileged to be able to tour a lot this year. And so you kind of have to make the best of the time that you have. And so, yeah, we're, We've got a little kind of studio set up that we can, I mean, it's really just a laptop, some speakers and, and a mic, and then that can get most things done for songwriting. So, yeah, we, we try and do it as often as we can. And, and it's also just, like, fun, so we like to do it on our days off. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so what was the inspiration for your song, XO? Inspiration for our song, XO... You know, it was just about a relationship that had become sort of expired or toxic, and and it was time to move on. Um, but when that happens, it's always it's always tough. You know, it's never an easy thing to do. But uh, even if it's the right thing, um, just when people's feelings are involved, so it was like that. That's that's what the song is kind of about. It's like still caring about someone, but realizing that you're not, you know, good together. Um, and, you know, I can say like a couple years removed from that song that like things do, do get better, you know, and ultimately in the long run, it is, 
it is a good decision. So, but yeah, that's that was the inspiration for that song. Cool. Um, and uh, what about um, your new song this time last year? Yeah, um, that one is just sort of about being in this time that we're in right now when it starts to become fall and and the season's changing and it's getting colder and sort of just triggers like memories of this same time last year and like recognizing some of the changes that have happened over the last year and feeling like you're sort of in a deja vu because some things about your surroundings are the same but but slightly different you know um so that's that's kind of what that song's about, and we wanted to put it out around this time um, of the year, like in the fall, just because um, that's really when it was when it was written about. So, yeah. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, is there one of your songs that means the most to you? I don't know. That's a good question. You're asking some good questions. Um, I think, of course, they all do in the moment mean a lot to us. Um, you know, I, I don't know. That's that's really tough. I think I think we we all probably have our own personal favorites. Um, mine right now, I think, is twenty something, and I think just because it's a it's a love song and it's like a hopeful song and in a situation that isn't like an ideal situation. It just kind of looks towards the more hopeful side of things. And I don't know, it just feels very relevant to me uh, right now. And so that one, I think I mean, it does change all the time, but I'll, I'll stick with that one for right now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. I love that song. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, you guys have toured with Kesha, All American Rejects, NF, and most recently Andy Grammer. Um, how did all of those opportunities come about? And are you planning a solo tour anytime soon? Um, yeah, we are actually. We are planning a solo tour. Uh, and we're going to announce it very soon, as a matter of fact, um, uh, right after this tour ends. So we're, we're super excited about that. Um, but all the other tours, you know, we've been, again, very privileged to be able to play with a lot of artists and learn from a lot of artists on the road, which um, we're super grateful for. But all those opportunities just kind of came through releasing music, you know? Um, and with that music come different either relationships or other artists who have discovered your music. And then when, you know, a tour is going out and they need an opener, it just sort of gives an opportunity for that. So, um, yeah, we, we've had a, we've had a great, great time touring of the last, two years or so with some really incredible artists. Nice. Cool. Now, yeah. and Andy Grammer uh, was kind enough to visit our Seacrest studio a couple of years ago. And I, and I have to know, is he still one of the nicest guys in the world? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. He, uh, he's been so nice and, um, you know, not only taking us on this tour, which is in and of itself, just incredibly, you know, we're incredibly honored to be a part of it, but you know, he's, is taking taking time to talk to us about our set and ask about you know how the tour is going and offer advice and um, you know taking us out to dinner and we get to you know we get to see him for a few minutes every day and he's he's always always positive and um, so yeah yeah man he's he's a great guy so great cool yeah um, uh, what's your favorite part about touring. Hmm. Favorite part. Well, favorite part is definitely, you know, performing each night and, and getting to meet, uh, fans and make new fans. Um, that's like, that's, that's our favorite part, but I'd say on like the travel level, you know, it's, 
if we have any time in the mornings or late at night after the shows to see, you know, parts of, of different cities is always super cool as well. Um, and we try to, it's not, all, it's not, uh, possible as often as you would think just because of the busy schedule but whenever we get the opportunity we like to see whatever we can see that's close to the venue nice cool. yeah um so do you ever get anxious before a performance um you know it's it's better it's better now every now and again it de- definitely you will get those like pre-show nerves. And I think that that's just normal. Um, you know, we played a really big show in New York, uh, this year and, um, or on this tour, uh, just, just uh, about a week ago. And that was, that was the biggest show on the tour. So that one was, was a little nerve wracking, but, um, you know, most of the time, once you, once you're in a tour, that's, 20, 30, or 40 days long, you know, or shows long, I should say, after about show three or four, you kind of get in, in the groove to where you can just enjoy it and you don't have to worry about being too nervous or anything. Um, so do you have a pre-show ritual to help you get ready for your show? Um, we like to kind of get warmed up. I know Nick does some stretches and um Joe sometimes will have a guitar in the in the green room and just sort of just warm your hands and your body up as much as possible and then we kind of huddle together to say a quick prayer and um and that's it, you know. Drink plenty of water. <laughs> but <laughs> nothing too nothing too crazy. We don't have any like uh I don't know, secrets unfortunately. <laughs> No secret if you hand- find any secrets out, then let us know. No secret handshakes? We actually, we do have a secret handshake. Oh. Well, it's not very secret, but we have a, we have a group handshake. Um, nice. But that us- we usually do that after the show. Oh, that's safe for post-show. Got it. Yep. Cool. <laughs> post-show ritual. <laughs> um, so is there someone you hope to collaborate with one day? Um... Well, I don't know. Lots of people. I think there are a lot of lot of incredible artists out there that we would love to collaborate with. Um, I think, yeah, it's just categories. You know, like there's. I think doing like a duet with a female would be amazing. You know, we we love lots of artists. Everyone from Lady Gaga to, you know. Um, I don't know, like all, all, like there's so many people. And then like on the rap side, I think like Kendrick Lamar would be awesome. And we also look up to bands that have kind of gone before us. So I think something that had like Sting or somebody from the police would be sick or I don't know. Honestly, like there's, there's just too many cool people (laughs) out there. So it's hard to narrow it down. You can put um, together a huge star mega band of all those people. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. Maybe we'll have to try and do like a Instagram video or something with Andy before this tour is over too, because that would be fun as well. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. My face just yeah. lit up. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, do you have any new music coming out soon? We have we have written a bunch of new music. Um, I'm not sure exactly when we'll put stuff out, only because we just put out a brand new song um, that's less than a week old. We just put it out on Friday, so we're kind of really excited about that one and, and promoting that one. But we're we're always writing. You know, we have just earlier today we were sending some demos around that we were listening through about four or five new songs. Um, so we, we definitely have a ton of stuff that we're working on. And um, I could tell you like an idea of when we are thinking, but I, I wouldn't want to um, <laughs> regret it and take it back because only because, um, you know, we are uh, 
definitely excited about this time last year, which we just put out, and I wouldn't want to lie to you if we end up having to push it back. So <laughs> so I won't say anything about that. But, yes, we, we are always working on new music. Right on. Always got yeah. something on the burner. <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly. So do you have a favorite singer or band? Hmm. Um, you know, I really, I really love, uh, we all actually really love Coldplay and I think Chris Martin, the lead singer has an amazing voice. Um, and then besides that, I love, uh, Brandon Flowers, um, who's the lead singer of the Killers. I think he's got an amazing voice, but those are, those are two of, of my, of my favorites for sure. Cool. Um, So, what's your biggest pet peeve when you're on tour? <laughs> <laughs> biggest pet peeve? Well, I'll tell you, this: the thing that people don't think about too much is um, you can only really bring whatever's in your suitcase for clothes. So, you get to that point in the tour when you have to do laundry, and, and that's sometimes can be scary if you get close to it and you're down to where you don't have any clean clothes left and <laughs> there's not a you know a washer and dryer close by um most venues or a lot of venues have washer and dryer so when you get to that point you can can wash your clothes but i'll say uh pet peeve is for sure not being able to just have clean socks whenever you want you know you really take yeah. that for granted until you don't have it <laughs> that, that's a great point nobody's mentioned that yeah <laughs> it doesn't fit in your suitcase you don't have it <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly or to you know today it's actually the first cold day of tour um and uh you know you the rest of the tour has been super warm so hmm. you can only really bring so much so it's like one jacket or hoodie and you know he's like we on this tour we will have been all the way in new england and seattle and then down to orlando florida so the temperatures change quite a bit but you're kind of limited to what you can carry you gotta hit up target or something <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. and we do we do all the time for sure. yeah. Yeah. uh but by the way that reminds me where what state are you calling from right now Right now we're in New Jersey, so we're just outside of New York, um, in in northern New Jersey. New Jersey, all right, because we have a map here in the studio that we try to we mark off states for every time we get a call from somebody, and uh, I want to make sure to ask you. So New Jersey, that's not marked off yet. There you go. Yeah, nice. There you go. I'm glad. I'm glad it was one that wasn't uh, that wasn't marked yet. I was going to be sad if it was one that like you had 30 calls from. Nope. Number one from New Jersey. There you go. <laughs> And Maya, Maya's had so many people call in, and we've never had to ask that question. So I'm like, we probably could have the whole United States map marked off, <laughs> save for like North Dakota, probably. But anyway. <laughs> well, well, next time we're in North Dakota, we'll make sure we call back. Yeah, do it. You got a number. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if there was a movie about Nightly, who would you want to play you? Wow, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, well, I'll say, uh, let me think about this. Um, I get all the time uh, that I have a celebrity lookalike, which is the kid from Modern Family. So I think if you were going based on that, um, it would probably be Luke from Modern Family. But if who I would who I would want, not that Luke isn't cool, but I'm trying to think of somebody who's like, you know, I'll, I guess we'll just stick with him because if you're going to go with somebody who looks the most like me, I think that that's what people usually say. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, um, if you could marry a fictional character, who would it be and why? Hmm. If I could marry a fictional character, who would it be and why? What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> who would it be and why? Okay, the guys are saying Princess Jasmine. <laughs> All right. And I think for two reasons. One, because she's a princess. Uh, and two, maybe access to the, uh, you know, the, the lamp. So maybe you'll get like some wishes in there too or something. 
That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Jasmine, you're nice and all, but what? Where's the lamp? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no. Sorry, Jasmine. <laughs> Um, if you could have any song playing to announce your entrance into a room, what song would it be? Your song's not included. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, we, uh, every time we've played in Nashville, which is where we're from, we've had, uh, the boys are back in town play at some point throughout the day, just by the, that, that song by San Lizzie, um, boys are back in town. So, I'd say probably that one. That feels, that feels like it might be our our theme song. You know, whenever night leaves in town, it's like the boys are back. So nice. Yeah. Um. So, is there a motto or quotation that you live by? Um. I don't know, like who said it, but at one point, um, a producer friend that we work with was reading us something and, and the, the basic principle of what he was saying was to not, don't be afraid to fail. Um, you know, because once you don't feel fear of failure, then you're, you're not afraid of going for whatever it is. And so I think as a band, we definitely, when we're writing songs, it's just, that's the motto is like, you know, it's okay to write a bad song, just get it out of your system or whether it's, um, doing a tour and you don't know how the audience is going to receive you or any of those things. I think that if we had to have a motto, I think that's one that I think about a lot. That's a really good one. Yeah. Um, so my last question for you is who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Who do we consider to be a real life superhero? That's a great question. I think we all were definitely super lucky to um, to come up in families where we had uh, good solid upbringings and uh, have been really supportive of us throughout our career and just like pursuits in music so I think personally, we would probably say our families have been like our superheroes. Um, and I think that's probably true of a lot of people because there are there are people that might be more popular um, that are supported by a lot of other people who who go unnoticed. And so, I think those people are the true superheroes. But if I have to go with somebody who everyone would know, I think I'd probably choose. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, only because, I mean, A, he seems like the strongest guy on the planet, but um, <laughs> he also seems like he's got a really uh, just good heart and good mentality. So I, I would, if I was to pick one person uh, other than our families, I would say The Rock. The Rock. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool stuff. Well, Maya, yeah. what else? Well, um, thank you so much for calling in. I loved uh, talking to you. No, thank you so much for calling and for reaching out to us. We really appreciate you guys, and thanks for listening to the music and, and taking the time. That is awesome. Jonathan and the rest of the guys from Nightly, thanks for taking the time. And hey, if you're setting up that tour and you have a Denver stop, make sure to uh, let us know. We'd love to have you in the Seacrest studio to play a song or two and say hey to the kids here at the hospital. We absolutely will. That's awesome, man. We All right. absolutely will. Cool. Have an awesome right, rest of your you day. Guys.